This is a review for the Dumbarton Quarry RV Park located outside of San Francisco Bay. This is our site at the Dumbarton Quarry on the bay, which is outside of San Francisco. It's on the east side of the bay, and it is a really nice site. This is a brand new, well, new in like the last year, RV campground and they took an old quarry and built it into a campground kind of state park area. You can see that we have a big asphalt um, pad here where the sites are back in. I don't see any pull throughs so it looks like everybody's a back in site the way they have it lined up. Plenty of space for our 40 foot RV and the Jeep and you can even see there's more space back there. We have a really nice picnic table that is over here in kind of this gravel area. There's a fire pit, lots of nice landscaping. And again, it's a young park. So some of those trees and stuff are pretty, pretty small and pretty young, but you can tell it's really going to be nice over the years. It's actually pretty quiet. So out in the distance, you can see Highway 880. So just to give you an idea where we're located, this is in the town of Fremont. So we're south of kind of like Oakland. But what's really nice is the quarry has a road. It's a toll road, but pretty much on the other side of where that green fence is out there, there's a toll road and it goes over the bay and you land right in Palo Alto, actually by the headquarters of Facebook on One Hacker Way. So really conveniently located that probably takes you 20 minutes to get across that toll road with our tow vehicle i think the the road um, toll was six dollars but they bill us later so you don't have to have like exact change or anything like that you just go across and i presume they're going to bill us at some point you can see we have water hook up over here our water is making noise <laughs> i guess because we're pulling from it we have septic and we have 50 amp so they have all three of those. The site is $65 a night, which for the Bay Area, you know, that's really not that bad. And we have a nice convenient spot that we can actually drive into and pull into. Trust me, you do not want to be driving a big rig into San Francisco proper. It's tough enough in a passenger vehicle. There is a gate and they lock the gate at 10 p.m. So you have to make sure that you are back to the site by 10 p.m. or so you're not going to be able to get in. I suppose you could park your car way down there and then walk in if you had to, but uh, just try to be back by 10 o'clock. They do lock it. And I think that's about it on what to tell you about this site. So uh, we'll show you some of the highlights of some of the things that we checked out in San Francisco that were within an hour of this location. So we only had one day to actually spend in San Francisco, but you can get a lot done. We took some time just to drive around the city. It was of course raining, pretty typical. There weren't a lot of people around because this was pretty early on during COVID. We were only like a year and a half into COVID and the city was pretty much at about 10% from what we heard from local friends. We checked out the Maritime National Historic Park, which is a really cool site. It's right on the water and you can actually go onto some of the different ships and they have a bunch of different areas where you can get information. And it's in a great location because you can walk to a bunch of different other sites that you'd want to see and be parked in the same location. And one such site was Ghirardelli Square, where we were able to go over, buy a bunch of chocolate. Um, since it was a cold November day, we picked up a cup of hot cocoa as well, and then headed over to Fisherman's Wharf. There's lots of restaurant options in this area, but we found a bakery, I believe it's pronounced Boudin. Someone will correct me, I'm sure, if I got that wrong, but they had the most amazing bread and we had lobster rolls and they were to die for. I still daydream about those lobster rolls. They were so good. So definitely you can head here and get some amazing bread. We then did the windy drive down Lombard Street 
and this is a really cool paved street that just zags back and forth and there's usually a long line of cars kind of heading down this you definitely cannot do this with the rv it was tight even in a jeep wrangler um, but we did that and then headed over to the golden gate bridge definitely got to check out the golden gate bridge there is an mps site that's down here i don't think it was open because of covid so we were not able to go in and work on junior ranger packets but i'm sure they have that normally you can actually park on either side of the bridge so on one side we parked kind of underneath you can see alcatraz out there in the distance and then we drove over the bridge parked on the other side of the bridge and then did the walk across the bridge for a little distance we concluded our evening with some dinner and visiting a good friend on the Stanford campus, and it was a beautiful evening. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video provided some information for your trip to San Francisco and a great option to stay, especially if you have a bigger rig. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at RV Homeschool.